$4 million from the city's multi-unit residential acquisition program is set to help protect residents at a downtown apartment building from evictions. The money was granted to St. Jude Community Homes back in 2022. The not-for-profit housing and support services provider used the funds to purchase a building with 20 homes at 1845 Girard Street. Mayor Chow says the purchase means the property is now secure and will ensure the residents are protected from potential evictions. Thanks to this wonderful mirror program, St. Jude was able to purchase the building. Now these 20 units are permanently secured forever, made affordable. Yes, it is great. It's important. This is an affordable non-market housing, and uh, it means that you feel the power because this is your home. Mayor Chow says that the homes will be secured as affordable housing for at least 99 years. Well, you know, speaking of the city, Toronto City Council is set to hold a special meeting next week to talk about the budget. And that's where Councillor Brad Bradford is proposing a 25 percent property tax cut for small businesses in the city. And Councillor Bradford joins us live in studio now. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, there's no denying that small businesses in our city need help. But the reality is the city is dealing with a massive budget deficit and it's looking for revenue. So how do you think the city can pay for this tax cut? The nice thing about this is my proposal is revenue neutral. Back in 2021, as part of our pandemic response, I worked with Mayor John Tory and the Premier to introduce a new small business subtax class. What that means is we were not going to tax the mom and pop shops on Main Street at the same rate as big box stores or downtown office towers. So this subtax class exists. And what my proposal is, is to provide a 25% reduction for small businesses. It will require those big box stores and some of the tall office towers to pay about a percentage more, but that 25% relief will make a big difference for Main Street trying to keep the lights on. So this would, have mean, uh, would mean amending child's budget. Do you have mm -hmm. the support for that? Yeah, I mean, you know what? I think, generally speaking, council understands the challenges facing small business. I think the mayor understands the challenges facing small business. And in many respects, it's, it's actually never been harder than it is right now. Um, you know, rents continue to go up. People have less disposable income. It costs more to run a business. And all the supports that used to exist from other levels of government, those taps have been turned off. So when I talk to small businesses, they tell me one of the biggest bills that they're facing every year is their commercial property tax. We need to be mindful of that and make sure we create an environment where entrepreneurs continue to bet on this city, continue to invest in Toronto. And we want to make sure we have a tax environment that promotes that investment and helps support the small businesses that are so vital to our main streets. OK, well, obviously, keep a close eye on that and see where it goes. On tobogganing, this is something you've been really passionate about. You've said that the city is becoming a no-fun city, but yesterday we know that council voted to reverse that ban at 45 Hills. Why is this something that's been so important to you? Well, you know what? It was great to see that common sense prevailed yesterday at City Hall. And I think sometimes people get cynical about local government. Keep in mind, Toronto was the city that tried to ban road hockey. It's the city that tried to put cats on leashes. Uh, and the toboggan ban, you know, really flies in the face of us being a winter city, us being a family-friendly city. Uh, it didn't make a lot of sense. So, you know, the motion carried yesterday with the support of council. Uh, we're not going to ban tobogganing, one of the most affordable and accessible winter recreation activities. Instead, we're going to promote it. Um, look, we've found a way to manage risk when people go swimming in the lake or use our skate parks or play full contact hockey in our arenas. The idea that staff got out over their skis on this one and just slapped down a unilateral ban was ridiculous. We were being billed as no fun city, but I'm pleased to say once the snow arrives, we're going to be ready to get out there and, and do some sledding. Yeah, and I guess next. all we need now is the snow. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Next week is the big vote. You know, looking at the current budget proposal, is Toronto on the right track to becoming the city that you want to be in? Well, it's in my view that we're in the midst of an affordability crisis and Mayor Chow's record-breaking historic tax hike doesn't really respond to the needs of people who are struggling to pay the bills right now. I remind Mayor Chow and my colleagues, it's not just the property tax increase that they're dealing with. They're paying more at the grocery store. They're paying more at the pumps. Interest rates are up. Uh, your rent is up. So you have to con consider the totality of the impact. And I think there's people who understand sometimes we have to pay a little bit more, but they want to see 
the benefit. And I'm not confident that with this historic tax increase, we are going to be able to reconcile some of the structural deficits that face municipalities across the country. We can't tax our way out of this problem. We need to work with other levels of government to offload some of those services that probably be, need to be better paid I've, by other I've levels. I've got about 20 seconds left here, but does that mean you're voting against Olivia Chow's budget? I could not support the budget as it is today. It's far too expensive. And again, I think it's really tone deaf on the affordability crisis. I'll be working with my colleagues to make sure that we're fighting for services, we're fighting for safety, and we're going to protect the core services that people rely on. Okay, okay. Councillor Brad Bradford, thank you very much. Okay.